I love actually starting my talks by showing this gross picture of a young boy with a, a huge drop of snot. Then I can kind of surprise them by telling them, you know, how wonderful the material is and uh, uh, how you know useful it is. Um, that without it, you would you would die basically very quickly. Mucus is one of humans' best friends and it's as important as skin is for our well-being. It's a gel that covers our wet epithelium. You find it in our eyes, our nose, the mouth, the lungs, the gastrointestinal tract and in the female genital tracts as well. So this gel is here to really protect us. It's uh, a barrier between our inner lining and the external environment. So it provides this protection, preventing you know, viruses, bacteria from, from going through and infecting uh, our body. Um, it protects us also by hydrating these surfaces, maintain, making sure the cells that are right underneath are, are well hydrated. Thomas Cruzier and his team at KTH are uncovering how mucus works. An important component in the mucus are mucins that make mucus jelly and that filter harmful particles. This is what we get when we collect the mucus um, from the stomachs of pig. This is what protects the stomach from acid juices in, in, in the pig. And we run this gel through uh, a process that lasts about a week. And this is the end result. We have this nice, pure mucin. And so we then uh, simply dissolve this in water, and that creates uh, a gel. Right? A gel that mimics uh, the mucus. So we could use this then to better understand uh, the barrier properties of mucus, to test our various approaches to modifying or enhancing the properties of mucus. If your mucus fails you, um, you'll notice it very rapidly. For instance, there is the mucin layer that sits on your eye um, or in your mouth. That can very quite easily uh, malfunction and that leads to dry eye and dry mouth um, syndromes, which affect somewhere between 30 and 40 percent of people older than 50. Another example can be found in the gastrointestinal tract, where mucus can become permeable to bacteria which leads to inflammatory bowel diseases. So we have uh, several goals uh, in our project, uh, so all based around this idea of mucus and mucus engineering. So one of the aspects is to uh, think about topical treatments um, that we can apply to mucus to enhance or repair uh, its properties. Uh, so we're uh, thinking of uh, delivering molecules that can reinforce the barrier properties of mucus, preventing uh, bacteria from going through uh, or preventing uh, other you know, small molecules or other types of cells from entering or from going through the mucus. Another way to reinforce a failing barrier is through biomaterial implantation, that is introducing mucus from animals. Some mucins seem to transmit dampening signals to the immune system and could help in this process. So we can um, imagine implanting this or for modulating the immune response of implanted materials so that the, the implanted materials could be recognized as self by the body and not as a foreign material and uh, to use it for drug delivery. We know these mucins are very sticky molecules so they can uh, delay the release, for instance, of various drugs Modifying the mucus with polymers can increase their barrier properties. This can prevent sperm cells from passing through the mucus, with the researchers at KTH now close to developing their first product, a new kind of contraceptive, one free of any hormones. I feel like this is a niche uh, that uh, we're just a few, maybe you know, two or three in the world, really looking at mucus in that particular way. Um, and so there's, there's a lot to discover. There's a, a very kind of a blank uh, sheet of paper, basically, where we're going to start writing new knowledge on. Um, and that's what gets me, yeah, get me excited.